earlier class in our earlier class we have studied about difference operators now see some of the examples here the following are true first backward difference operator is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus 1 this is your shifting operator second this central difference operator is equal to e to the power 1 by 2 minus e to the power minus 1 by 2 third mu this is equal to 1 by 2 e to the power 1 by 2 plus e to the power minus 1 by 2 fourth mu square is equal to 1 plus 1 by 4 central difference operator is square fifth forward difference operator is equal to backward difference operator and operating on shifting operator e this is equal to central difference operator e to the power 1 by 2 see here solution of two central difference operator over fx see here this solution of this one so it can be written as as per definition fx plus h by 2 minus fx minus h by 2 so this is equal to f x plus 1 by 2 into h minus f x minus 1 by 2 into h so it will be equal to e to the power 1 by 2 f x minus e to the power minus 1 by 2 f x from the definition that e to the power minus n f x is equal to f x minus n h so it is equal to e to the power 1 by 2 minus e to the power minus 1 by 2 f x since this is linear So this central difference operator is equivalent to e to the power one by two minus e to the power minus one by two from left hand side and right hand side. This clear. Similarly, other relations can be proved. There is no problem. If you have any difficulty, ask me the questions. Next, there is a very important relation between the differential operator D capital D and the difference operator. This forward difference operator. See here. Since f x plus h, this can be written as f x plus h into f dash x plus h square by factorial to f double dash x plus so on. This is our Taylor's theorem. So using Taylor's theorem, is f x plus h is written in expanded form. This is equal to f x plus h into this f dash x is nothing but d d x of f x. So it is d of f x, where d is equivalent to d by d x plus h square by factorial to d two f x plus h cube by factorial to d three f x and so on. So it can be written as take here f x common, so it will be one plus h d plus h square by factorial to d two plus h cube by factorial to d three plus so on f x. Here uh, don't confuse that this f x is multiplied. With this product, with this uh, bracket, this, uh, small bracket, but actually these are the operators d2, d, d3, d4, and etc. They are the operators. They are operating on f x. This uh, small bracket is only to separate these operators with f x, not the multiplication sign here. So it can be written as it for h d f x. It for h d is this one. It can be written as in this form. It for h d f x. So E f x. See here, f x plus is f x plus h is nothing but E f x. Means shifting operator over f x. This is equal to e to the power s d f x. Or i plus forward difference operator f x is equal to e to the power s d f x. This e is equivalent to i plus forward difference operator. From these two, we can get i plus forward difference operator is equivalent to e to the power s d, and which is equivalent to e. Take logarithm of both sides. So log i plus forward difference operator is equal to take here logarithm. It will be h into capital D, or capital D is equal to one by h log i plus forward difference operator, or capital D is equal to one upon h forward. Expand this log i plus delta using the formula log one plus x is equal to x minus x square by two plus x cube by three minus one. So it will be d equal to one by h delta. Uh, forward difference operator minus second order forward difference operator by two plus third order forward difference operator by three minus so on. So this is our relation between this capital D means differential operator and this forward difference operator. So.
so this is an important part now the next topic that we are to study is about interpolation see what is this interpolation see first its introduction suppose we have a function y is equal to fx we are given a function y is equal to fx and x0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to n means the values of x varies from x0 to xn it means x belongs to closed interval x0 xn let f be single valued function this f is a single valued function not a multiple valued we have the values of fx corresponding to certain values of x there are given uh, several values of x and for those several values of x we have corresponding values of fx this can be written in a tabular form as below and these values of x and fx they are written here in a table in which the first row is for the values of x x0 x1 x2 x3 x1 xn and the second row is for values of fx f0 f1 f2 f3 and so on fn our aim is to find a function fx satisfying the above table so here in interpolation we need to find a function fx which will satisfy this one table means from that uh, polynomial for x0 for x is equal to x0 we get fx is equal to f0 for x0 x is equal to x1 we get fx equal to f1 for x is equal to x2 we get fx is equal to f2 and for x is equal to f xn we get fx is equal to fxn and so on such a process this processing means using this table and making a polynomial satisfying this table is called interpolation so this definition is very clear that we need to find a polynomial that will satisfy this table 1 means for different values of x we have corresponding different values of fx the polynomial phi x satisfying the above table 1 is called the interpolating polynomial now we get the polynomial satisfying this table 1 that polynomial is called interpolating polynomial for the justification we have a theorem due to weierstrass in 1850 55 if fx is a continuous in x0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to n mean fx is continuous in this interval x0 xn then given any epsilon greater than 0 there exists polynomial px such that mod fx minus px is less than epsilon so there there is a theorem given by weierstrass that there is a if fx is a continuous function in the closed interval then for a given epsilon greater than 0 we have a polynomial px such that mod fx minus px is less than epsilon for all x in x0 xn due to this uh, polynomial px we can uh, get an interpolating polynomial for this fx given several values of x in the form of a table see uh, the next in this process or in the line we have lagrangian interpolation and newton gregory forward interpolation formula and newton gregory backward interpolation formula first we will study lagrangian interpolation there exists see here what about all in lagrangian interpolation there exists some interpolation formula where the arguments are unequally spaced it means x1 minus x0 is not equal to x2 minus x1 is not equal to x3 minus x2 and so on means the x0 the values of x0 x uh, that is x0 x1 x2 x3 and so on xn they are not equally spaced let us have a function yx continuous and differentiable n plus 1 times in the interval 
AB. There is a function fx, which is continuous and differentiable n plus one times, and the interval is your AB. We are given the values of x and y in a tabular form. See here again we have a table x equal to x0, x equal to xn, x equal to x2, and so on, x equal to xn, and the corresponding values of y are y0, y1, y2, y3, and so on, yn. See what we have to find. We need to find a polynomial nl ln x of degree n such that ln xi is your yi. So this ln xi is our interpolating polynomial as we have discussed earlier, where y i is equal to 0, 1 to so on, and this is our equation 2. So here in also Lagrangian polynomial, we are given this table. And on the basis of the table, we need to find a polynomial that will satisfy this table. That polynomial is denoted as ln xi, and we will call it a, an interpolating polynomial. So this is all about for today. And if you have any query, you ask me here. In the next class, uh, I will prove all the parts of Lagrange interpolation.